Today's daf we're going to be learning is Pesachim daf Samach, not an easy daf, so prepare yourselves. Um, we're going to start with um, the idea, okay, let me do the dedication and then I'll give some intro. Today's daf is sponsored by Jonathan Huber in memory of Tzafir ben Shaul and Yardena Zichrono Levracha, a God-fearing man who loved learning Torah. Okay, we're going to start with this Mishnah about Pesach Shelo Lishma. Okay, when I did my intro, if you didn't hear it yet, it's at the very end of the last page of the previous parak before we started. Intro on Korbanot. One of the things we discussed is how important what you're thinking about is. There's a whole debate, I didn't get into this then, but there's a whole debate when we say if you think about the wrong thoughts while you're doing a sacrifice, there's a debate whether we mean actually thinking, just thinking alone, or do we mean expressing? That's a whole side machlok at whether that's, okay, but let's take it as a given. Either you thought or you expressed something that was incorrect, you can mess up a sacrifice. So one of the classic ways of doing this is shalol lishma. What does that mean? It means I designated an animal for a particular purpose, for a chatad, an asham, whatever it might be. In our case, it'll be for a Pesach. I designated it, which I could have done months before Pesach. We don't know. And then I sacrifice it on the day it's supposed to be sacrificed. On Erev, right? The difference between Pesach and all the other sacrifices, all the other sacrifices I could do any day I want. If I bring this on the day of Pesach, and then when I sacrifice it, again, it could be me, it could be the, right? It could be me slaughtering it, let's say, or it could be one of the Kohanim doing the work on it, right? When they're doing one of the Avodot that they do, and they have an incorrect thought, right? They can mess up my Korban. That's a whole separate topic. They can totally mess up my Korban with the wrong Machshava. If they think they're doing it for a Korban Shlamim, for example, that's called Shalom Lishma, and that disqualifies the Korban, because today it's supposed to be a Pesach, and it disqualifies it. Okay, I'm, I'm debating whether to tell you this or not, and it'll just confuse you, but I'm going to tell you now something that's more relevant for the second part of the class today, which is that there's a unique halacha, though, by Korban Pesach, which is, if I go on the 14th, I remember, just put this in your mind and then put it out of your mind because it's not relevant for the first part of the shir. Since Korban Pesach, let's say I designate this animal for Korban Pesach. Korban Pesach is a type of peace offering. It's within the category of peace offerings. So if I take that animal and I sacrifice it on a day not Erev Pesach, any other day of the year, okay, then what happens if I sacrifice it as a Korban Pesach, right, Lishmo, usually Lishmo is the right way to do it. In this case, Lishmo is wrong. I can't bring a Korban Pesach on the first day of Nisan or the first day of Shvat or whatever it might be. I can't do that. So it will be disqualified. However, if I bring it, Shelo Lishmo, I bring it as a Korban Shlamim, as a peace offering, on a day that's not Erev Pesach, it actually works. So Shelo Lishmo ends up with the, on a different day, ends up as the same status as Lishmo on the 14th of Nisan, the day the Korban is supposed to be brought. So that's like a tricky, confusing thing which you have to get to be able to understand what we're going to learn today. So again, put that out of your mind for right now. We'll come back to it. Okay, Mishnah. Ha, we're now starting at the Mishnah on Nun Terem with Ben. Okay, let's stop for a minute. If I slaughter the Korban Pesach, remember, there's four main works, jobs that you have to do with the Pesach, four central ones. You have to do Shechita, slaughtering, Kabbalah, accepting the blood, Holacha, walking the blood to the altar, and the fourth is Rikat Adam, putting the blood on the altar. Those are the four main work jobs. So if you did, now we're going to see later that it says this job and this and this and this, but it really means this or this or this or this. Okay, soon we're going to see. Gemara is going to explain that. But it says, Pesach, that you either slaughtered with the wrong intent or, right, you, you said I'm doing this for a shlamim and it was Yudalid in the afternoon and you're supposed to do it for Pesach or you, you accepted the blood or you walked it. You did any of those things with the intent that this was for a shlamim. It's a problem, okay? Pasu. Or, lishmo v'shelo lishmo. O shelo lishmo v'lishmo. What if you did it both for the right intent and for the wrong intent? Now, you might say, this whole thing is kind of weird. What are we talking about? What's the reality of this? So, first of all, you might say this isn't so realistic and they're really just discussing concepts. That's definitely possible, purely theoretical discussion. However, one could say, and I know myself, I'm very distracted very often, and you're in the middle of doing one thing and you automatically, your head 
goes into something else. And it definitely is possible that while you're thinking you're doing this for one sacrifice, you get confused and you all of a sudden think it's for another. And people who easily get distracted can relate to this. So it is possible. Imagine, you know, the Kohanim had a lot in their minds. Yes, on the one end, there was reason. On the other end, they're humans, and humans make mistakes, and their mind wanders. And, you know, whether we're talking about mind, even just mind, or even expressing, still, you could think a minute ago you thought you were doing this for, for uh, Pesach, and all of a sudden you thought, oh, maybe this is a shlami. Okay, so if that's the case, if you did it for both, Lishmo v'Shalo Lishmo, or Shalo Lishmo v'Lishmo, okay, we'll talk about the significance of the order soon. Pasul, all these cases, it's disqualified. Ketzad lishmo v'shalo lishmo. What would be a case? I already told you this, but l'shem Pesach or l'shem Shlamim. If first you thought you're doing it for Pesach and then you said you're doing it for Shlamim or first you said Shlamim, right? And then shalo lishmo v'lishmo is l'shem Shlamim or l'shem Pesach. Again, the topic right now is only on the 14th in the afternoon. That's the only topic we're talking about. We're not getting to that case I talked about earlier about we're standing down on the day of Pesach. By Rav Papa. Comes Rav Papa and he asks a question, which is going to keep us busy for a while. We're going to try to bring four attempts. To, first, we have to explain his question. Then we're going to bring four attempts to answer his question from our Mishnah, two from our Mishnah, two from the next Mishnah, and all are going to fail. And we're in the end not going to have an answer to his question. So you might say, why are we bothering to continue? But that's what we do in Gemara. We ask questions and we open possibilities, even if we don't always get the answers. So by Rav Papa, he asks the following question. When it says, Lish, okay, well, we don't know exactly what he means, but we'll see in a minute that he's talking about the second part of the Mishnah. Are we talking about in when you had a machshava of Lishmo and Shalo Lishmo, right? L'shem Pesach or L'shem Shlamim, or L'shem Shlamim or L'shem Pesach. Was it all in one avoda, or was it in two different? Was, did it mean while you're slaughtering, your mind wandered and you flipped from one to the other? Or was it that you have one during Shechita, and a different during Zrika, let's say. Okay? So, what's the relevance? Well, here are the two possibilities. Ba'avodah chatnan. If it's in one avodah, then you would have to say that our Mishnah is only like Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi, you know, this is a debate we saw before. But if somebody says, Harezot murat ola, harezot murat shlamim. If I say, I'm bringing this as a substitute for an ola, and I'm bringing this as a substitute for a shlamim, you can't bring one animal as a substitute for two different things. So the question is, how do we view your statement? According to Rabbi Yossi, you didn't say anything. Because what you said was a total contradiction. Rabbi Meir says, we, right, so that's af lashon acharon, right? We, we, we even include, we look at the whole thing that a person said. According to Rabbi Meir, in that case, we go by lashon rishon. He says, tfos lashon rishon. The first thing someone said is what's relevant. So if he said something that contradicted, we assume he meant what he said at first. Okay? So now, Rabbi Yossi, if you say it's all in one avodah, you said lishmo v'shalo lishmo or l'shalo lishmo v'lishmo, and we said it's disqualified, it must be because we hold like Rabbi Yossi. Because, right, you would say, we look at the whole thing, and within this whole thing, you said a contradiction. Right? You can't have both your korban is a Pesach and is a Shlamim, and therefore it's invalid. But, de'i Rabbi Meir, if you said it's Rabbi Meir, amar ha'mar tfos lashon rishon, what would he say? In the case of lishmo, vishalo lishmo, first you said lishmo, we don't care that you said shalo lishmo, we only go by the first thing you said. So if it all happened in one avodah, we would say that Rabbi Meir would think this is good, which means our Mishnah doesn't hold like Rabbi Meir. So that's one side of the question. O Dilma, or perhaps, Dilma b'shteavodotna. Maybe it's talking about, you started, you did the shechita. First of all, by the way, shechita could be a different person. Because shechita could be by anybody. And the other avodot is done by a kohen. And even in the other avodot, it could be different people speaking. So, especially if it's someone different. But even if it's the same person. If while you were doing shechita, you said lishma. And then later, you were doing zrika. And you thought, shalom lishma. Well, maybe then, afilu l'rabi meir, damar tfos l'shon rishon. When he says we go by the first thing a person says, maybe only means when you make one statement at the same time. But when you're talking about different time frames, right? One is you're doing one thing and then you go to the next one. Maybe even Rabbi Meir would agree. Maybe he would agree that this is pasul because it's true. Your shechita was done perfectly, 
But your zrika was done 100% imperfectly. You can't say, oh, well, you started with lishma. You're now in some other activity. So maybe he would agree. And then the Mishnah could be according to everybody. So just to be very clear, if the second part of the Mishnah, there's two parts of the Mishnah, later we're going to see there's two parts of the second part, okay? But right now we're talking about, because the Gemara is going to keep calling Reisha and Seifa different things. If you remember, Reisha means the beginning of the Mishnah. Seifa means the latter part of the Mishnah. But it often is relative. And today it's going to be used very relatively. It's going to keep jumping. Reisha and Seifa are going to each time mean something else. So right now we have the Reisha and the Seifa. The Reisha is either Shrita or Zrika or any of the other Avodot, right? And one of them, you do Shalom Lishma. The second case is you do both Lishma and Shalom Lishma. You do two, right? But opposite. And the question is, is that during one Avodah, which would then mean it's only Rabbi Yossi, because Rabbi Meir would say, whichever one you said first is valid. So in the case of Lishma, you would end up, it would be good if you started with Lishma. You did it for the sake of the Korban Pesach. Or is it B'shtei Avodot, the Shechita was done right, Holacha was done wrong, let's say, and then even Rabbi Meir would agree, we're not going to go by the first thing you did in this case, because one of your, remember, each Avodah in itself has to be good. And here you don't have a valid Avodah because you were doing it for the purpose of a Shlamim when it really is a Korban Pesach. So that's the question. So now the question goes even more, though. They say, wait, um, what are you asking the question about? Amre Ahaya, where is there this debate about what Rabbi Meir would say? Because that's really the question. What would Rabbi Meir hold about our Mishnah? If it's, remember, in the second case of the second part of the Mishnah, there's two cases. One is where you say first Lishma for the Pesach, and then you say for the Shlamim. And the other is where you say first for the Shlamim and then for the Pesach. Well, if you started with Shlamim, what does Rabbi Meir hold? Tfos Lashon Rishon. Go by the first thing you say. So if you start with Rabbi, if you say that case, there's no question. Even Rabbi Meir will say it's pasul because you started with shalolishmo. So you messed it up. So inema ashalolishmo vilishmo. The question is on that case, ben b'avodachat, ben b'shtei avodot, ben le Rabbi Meir, ben le Rabbi Yossi, i patzalemi kamaita. Everyone agrees that because you started with shalolishmo, it's clearly disqualified. Because even Rabbi Meir, who says, go by the first thing you say, well, the first thing you said is a problem. So in that case, he would agree. Clearly that Rabbi Meir would agree with that one. Tahala Rabbi Yossi Nami and Rabbi Yossi also. Even Rabbi Yossi, right, because he doesn't say we're going to go by, he doesn't say we go by the last thing you say, which is you said Lishma here. No, he goes by even the last thing, meaning we take into consideration. It's not like Rabbi Meir holds, we go by the first thing you said and Rabbi Yossi holds, we go by the last thing you say, which could have been a theory maybe, right? It's, what's the theory behind this? The theory is, if you said something, we assume you mean it. The fact that you added something after, you know, I don't know exactly why, but you must have added something for no reason. You could think of a logic saying, we go by the last thing you say, because often you correct yourself. But that's not what Rabbi Yossi holds. Rabbi Yossi holds even the last thing. In other words, we take into consideration everything you said. If we take into consideration everything you said, well, you also said it's Shelo Lishmo, and therefore it will be disqualified. So everyone's going to agree it's disqualified there. Ella, alishmo v'shalo lishmo mai. So the question is clearly on the one case in the last part of the Mishnah, which says, if you did it lishmo, v'shalo lishmo. So you started with Pesach, which according to Rabbi Meir would be good. And then you move to Shlamim. Does your Shlamim mess it up? And then, according to Rabbi Meir, it would only mess it up if the Mishnah was talking about that you did it in two different avodot. Okay, two different stages of the korban. So, what's the answer? So, as I said, we're going to see four possible answers. None of them are going to succeed. Tashma. So, let's learn it from our Mishnah. What does our Mishnah say? Ha-Pesach she-shachato shelo lishmo, right, the first part. V'kibel v'hilech v'zarak shelo lishmo. So, hechidami, what exactly is this case? As I mentioned when we read it, the case sounds like you did shechita, and Holacha, and, uh, and Kabbalah, and Holacha, and Zrika, all four of Adot, Shelo Lishma. But, it says here, Hechidami, Ine Makidikatani, if you take it literally, that end means end, and not or. This is the big question. When it says Vav, Vav always means end, but maybe it means or. So if you say it means end, Lama Liad Machir Lekulu, Mikamaiti Pasele. You wouldn't need to go on. If you just say, if I shechted Lishma, uh, sorry, shelo lishma. If I shechted it, l'shem of course it's a problem. You don't need to say 
And if I moved, and if I collected the blood for the wrong reason, and if I walked it over to the Mizbeach for the wrong reason, and if I put the blood on the altar for the wrong reason. Once I started Shalol Lishma, that's enough. It's not that all the, all the Avodot have to be. Now, everyone agrees that once one Avodat is no good, that's why I said there's four main Avodot. Other things, maybe not, but these four of them don't have to be done properly. If one is not done properly, it's a problem. So you would need the rest of the lines of the Mishnah. So therefore, you know, the rest of that part of the Mishnah in the beginning. Um, so it says here, right, if you're going to say it was in the first one, so you wouldn't need. Already from the first, it would be pasul. El alav hachi katani. So it must be read like this. If you slaughter the Pesach not for the proper reason, meaning for Shlamim, or alternatively, you did it for the right reason when you did it, the slaughtering, but but then you did a different one of the Avodot for the wrong reason. Or you did, let's say, the first three for the right, for the Pesach, and then you sprinkle the blood for the wrong Korban. Now, if that's the case, the whole first part of the Mishnah is already talking about Lishmo and Shelo Lishmo in two Avodot. So therefore, what's the conclusion of the Gemara? Ema Seifa. So therefore, when it says at the end of the Mishnah, Lishmo v'Shelo Lishmo Hechidami. So what's that case going to be then? In Ema B'Shte Avodot, if you're going to say, you shefted for Pesach, and then you did the sprinkling of the blood for the, for the Kshlamim, we already know that. That's exactly the case we just explained is the Reisha, Hainu Reisha. Therefore, El Alav Ba'avodachat, therefore it must be. The second part means that, let's say, for example, you shechted, first you had in mind while you started the Shechita, Lishma, for the Pesach, then you changed your mind and had in mind for a Shlamim, and then what would we say? Who would be the who would the Mishnah hold like? Only Rabbi Yossi, because Rabbi Meir would say, if you started Lishma, it would be fine, because Tfos Lashon Lishon. So therefore, we would say, And then it's only going to be Rabbi Yossi. But the Gemara, as you know, is going to reject this. You know this because I told you already. The Gemara doesn't like this answer. And this is the difference between the Reisha and the Seifa. Reisha de kai b'shchita v'kamachashe b'shchita. Inami kai b'zrika v'kamachashe b'zrika. Okay, so the Reisha is, you're in Shechita and you're thinking about Shechita, or you're in Zrika and you're thinking about Zrika. But we're, okay, now again, Shte Avodot. So you did one Avodah properly, and another Avodah you did improperly. But what kind of improper thought you had? What we thought before, right? As you're Shechting it, you think I'm doing it for Pesach. As you sprinkle the blood, you think I'm sprinkling this blood for a Shlame. That would be your classic example of two Avodot. But now, what's the Seifa then? So when Seifa says, Lishma v'shalo Lishma, in two Avodot, what do we mean? Seifa dekai b'shchita v'kachashi b'zrika. Okay, what does that mean? You're standing slaughtering the animal. And then you start thinking about what you're going to do further on. So while you're slaughtering the animal, again, you either say or you're thinking, I'm slaughtering this animal for a korban Pesach. But then you start thinking, soon I'm going to sprinkle the blood. When I sprinkle the blood, or, or whoever's going to sprinkle the blood, this animal is being slaughtered for the purposes to sprinkle the blood as a korban shlamin. Again, it's hard to imagine you would do this, but this is theoretical, let's say, okay? Or maybe, again, your mind wanders. So that's what it is. So you're thinking during shechita that you're going to sprinkle it at the, for the wrong korban. Da'amar, so here we're going to read it inside. Ha'reni shochei, and here it even says da'amar. Notice, this would be proof that you actually have to say it, but again, one could say maybe just say it in your heart. Okay, so the Seifa, when it says, this is no good either, it's telling you a different case. It's telling you, I'm slaughtering the Pesach in order, and I'm slaughtering this animal for a Korban Pesach, in order to sprinkle the blood as a Korban Shlamim, as a peace offer. And what's it trying to tell you? A different halacha, which comes up elsewhere, which the Gemara is going to mention. This is to tell you, okay, this is what Rabbi Papa asked, questioned someone based on this assumption that mechashvim me'avodah la'avodah somewhere else, okay, in Zvachim. Okay, we're not going to get into the details there, but they're just telling us. This isn't the, it's the same Rabbi Papa that asked the question here, but they're not talking about Rabbi Papa's question here. They're saying Rabbi Papa questioned someone else somewhere else about this issue. Rabbi Papa said, 
We are mechashev me'avodah l'avodah. What does that mean? It means that if I have a thought while I'm doing one of the avodot, one of the steps of the, of the process of the korban, and I'm thinking in an incorrect manner about a different avodah, not the one I'm doing now, it actually is effective. Being effective means it messes it up. So lishmo v'shalo lishmo in our Mishnah means while I'm slaughtering, for instance, I'm thinking about, I'm slaughtering for the right reason, but I'm thinking about sprinkling the blood for the wrong type of korban. That, according to our Mishnah, is pasul. And then this teaches you nothing about what Rabbi Meir would say about two of, what um, Rabbi Meir would say about one avoda, right? It wouldn't teach you, wouldn't, wouldn't, we know what Rabbi Meir would say about one avoda, but that's not what our Mishnah is talking about. Our Mishnah, right, then it's not clear whether our Mishnah is talking about, and it's then our Mishnah could be, according to this explanation, even the ratios to Avodot, which means it would hold both by Rabbi Meir and by Rabbi Yossi, and it has nothing to do with this machlok about Tvos Hashem because it's not even talking about one avoda. Okay? So that's the Gemara's conclusion right now, that it could go either way. Second attempt, Tashma. O shelo lishmo vilishmo pasu. Okay, now, as I said, first we were comparing the first line of the Mishnah to the second line of the Mishnah. Now we're only dealing with the second part of the Mishnah. And the second part of the Mishnah says, if you do it, Lishmo v'shalo lishmo, or shalo lishmo v'lishmo. So the ratio is going to be lishmo v'shalo lishmo, first for the right reason, then for the wrong reason. Then we're going to do lishmo v'shalo lishmo, first for the wrong reason, then for the right reason. And both are the same halacha, they're both disqualified. So, o shalo lishmo v'lishmo pasu. So the last line, if you do it shalo lishmo, and then lishmo, pasu, hechidami. What's the case? Again, we're going to try to establish whether we're talking about one of Odar or two. If it's two different avodot, if when you start off the right way and you started doing it for a korban pesach, and then in one of the later avodot you switched and you said I'm doing this for a shlemim, it's disqualified. So of course, if you start with the wrong reason shalolishmo and you start doing it on on the 14th of Nisan, for the purposes of a shlamim, where you remember, the whole thing is that you originally, okay, just in case this wasn't clear, I'm going to repeat it. The whole problem is because you originally designated this animal, who knows when, you could have been the morning of, could have been three months before, you designated this animal for Korban Pesach, it was labeled as a Korban Pesach. If you take it on your Dalit and you try to do it as a shlamim, it's disqualified. So now, if that's the case, you wouldn't need to tell me if I start off good and then switch to bad, it's bad. Of course, if I start off bad, I'm going to mess it up from the get-go. Why do you need to tell me if I then said lishmo, it's still disqualified? There's no chidush there. So therefore, um, it must be telling you about if you did it all within the same avodah. And then it's teaching you, maybe you would have thought that you kind of changed your mind about it, right? And fixed it. Right, because once you fully complete an avodah in the wrong way, of course it's going to be disqualified. Maybe the chidush here is if you did it all in one avodah, and therefore midaseif avodah chad. Since that case of lish, remember our whole question was on the case of lishmo v'shalol lishmo. So if shalol lishmo v'lishmo is all during one avodah, then obviously lishmo the case right before it, which is parallel to lishmo v'shalol lishmo, must be avodah chad. So reishanami avodah chad. So now the gemara again rejects this law. Now, you could say, even shalom lishma is b'shtavodot. So why is it mentioned? It's unnecessary. So the fact is, the Gemara says, yeah, it really is unnecessary. Really, you didn't need to mention that case. It was obvious. But why did they mention it? This is a classic answer, right? Sometimes we have, they would never mention anything that doesn't need mentioning. And sometimes they say, oh, they just did it for literary purposes, right? For parallelism. So here... I did the Tana Lishmo, the Shalom Lishmo, Tana Nami Shalom Lishmo, Vilishmo. Since it brought one case, it then brought the opposite case, right? Shmo, Shalom Lishmo, and Lishmo, Shalom Lishmo, Vilishmo. Okay, and then you can't really derive too much from that. Tashma, next source. Shato, Shalom La Ochlava, Shalom La Minuyav, La Relimu, Litmeim, Pasu. And now we're going to get into the next Mishnah, which is if you slaughter an animal, not for people who can't eat, like a sick person or an old person who can't eat, and you slaughter it with the intent of those people and they can't even eat the korban or yav, me and a bunch of us got together and we made a group and when we brought the animal to be slaughtered whoever slaughtered it had the intent that it was for a different group okay let our for people who don't have a brit milah are not allowed to eat it or for people who are impure and can't eat the korban pesach 
if when they were slaughtering, they had it in mind for an entire group of people who couldn't eat, then, or it was the wrong one, the wrong group, pasul, it's disqualified. So now, how many avodot are we talking about there? Well, there was only one thought, right? this. Obviously, it's bavodachat. It's not a case there of this and this, right? If you have two machshavot, you can say maybe the two machshavot were in different time, different actions. But here, it was only one thought. So it was obviously only in one avodah. So now they say like this, like I said, reisha and sefer are always relative. Mid sefer, which means the next mishnah is bavodachat. It must be, remember, we're not learning this mishnah until tomorrow stuff. But they viewed the Mishnah, right? The Mishnah, if you looked in the Mishnah book, they, they're right next to each other. And who even divided them the way we divide them, right? That's all later. These Mishnah were one, one, as we call, retzef, right? One flow. So if that's the case, since that's talking about Avodah Achat, we can assume that our case is also Reshanami Ba Avodah Achat. Okay? That's an assumption. So the Gemara obviously is going to question that assumption and say, that's a ridiculous assumption. Midi Ilya, Hakid Yita, Hakid Yita. You, just because the next case is only one avoda doesn't mean this case is only one avoda, which means, right, seif avoda achat, reisha iba avoda achat, iba she avodot. Both are still possibilities in our Mishnah that didn't prove anything. Next case. Next case is also from the next Mishnah. This is going to be our fourth attempt and our last. Tashma, le'ochlav v'shalo le'ochlav kasher. Even though if I slaughter the animal for the purpose of people who can't eat it, let's say I'm thinking of the only people I'm thinking of can't eat the korban. That's disqualified. But if I'm thinking of a group of people, some of them can eat and some of them can't eat, that doesn't disqualify the korban. Since I had in mind some people who can eat, it works. So the Mishnah says, if I do it, it's kasher. It's effective. Now again, hechidami. What do you think this is? One avodot or two avodot? So, if it's b'shte avodot, what would you have to explain? You'd have to say, the reason why this isn't a problem is because when he said shalola ochlav, he did it when he was sprinkling the blood. De'en machshevet ochlin bezrika. Okay, meaning, what does that mean? He's trying to tell you if you started and you shechted le'ochlav, and then when you did the sprinkling of the blood, you did you thought for people who aren't going to eat it entirely, just them, not the people who are also going to eat it. Why is this still okay? Because. There's no machshavet ochlin bezrika. That means any thoughts you have while you're sprinkling the blood. When you're shechting the animal, if you think about eating it, and a mistake about eating it, it's a problem because shechting allows you to eat. But blood, right, you can't eat it unless you slaughter it. But the sprinkling of the blood has nothing to do with eating, right, other than it, it, it permits the eating, but it, it doesn't effectively have anything to do with eating. So a machshava about sp during sprinkling doesn't mess you up, if that's what it's trying to say. Therefore, what would you infer then if it was all in one avodah? So you're trying to say, what would you infer then? That if it was about two avodot and it's trying to tell you, Zrika machshava doesn't mess you up, then you would think though that if you did it during shechita, okay, and you thought it would be pasul, but that's not true. We know already. That if you have a few people in mind, in addition to all the other people you have in mind, that, and some of them can't eat, that doesn't mess up your korban. So it can't be that. So it can't be that we're talking about two avodot and it's trying to teach you about zrika, because then it would teach you about shechita, that it would specifically be a problem, and that's not a problem. So therefore, el alav achad, it must be that it's all b'avodah achad, and it's coming to teach you exactly that law, that if you say le'ochlav v'shalo le'ochlav, since you're including people who can eat, we ignore the fact that you included some people who can't eat, and it's kashel, which means that that Mishnah is talking about one avodah, which means we need to say for avodah achat, they should not be avodah achat. And since the latter part, again, since that Mishnah is avodah achat, this Mishnah is also avodah achat, we already know how they're going to reject this, right? The same thing as we just did a minute ago, midi iria, just because that Mishnah is one avodah, Hakadita, Hakadita, right? Each one has its own nature. The fact that that case is all one avoda doesn't teach us anything about our case. And therefore, Seif of Avodachat, clearly the upcoming Mishnah is talking about only in one avoda. But Resha, our Mishnah, again, our case of Lishma, Vishalo Lishma, is Oba Avodachat, Obishte Avodot. And again, let me just repeat in case you don't remember anymore. If you say it's Avodachat, Lishma, Vishalo lishma, then you would have to say, right, and it's disqualified according to our Mishnah, you would have to say, our Mishnah is only Rabbi Yossi, because Rabbi Meir would say, Tfos Lashon Rishon. You already started Lishma, that's all we care about, we ignore the second part of what you said. 
So it would only be Rabbi Yossi who says, we look at everything you said, and within what you said is disqualification, is disqualified words, therefore we're going to disqualify your sacrifice. If you say it's B'Shev Adot, then you could claim that Rabbi Meir would agree that if you did one Avodah Lishma, but you did an entire Avodah with the wrong reason, he would also disqualify it. Because there you don't say Tfos Lashem Rishon, because there are two different things that went on. But in the end, we don't have an answer. So our Mishnah could be everybody, it could be only Rabbi Yossi. New question. Now we're going to get to the thing that I brought up in the intro, which is, once we establish what happens with a Korban Pesach that you do, Lishmo v'shalo Lishmo, on Erev Pesach, now we're going to ask a question, what if it's, okay, again, we have to remember the basics. If it's any day of the year other than the 14th of Nisan, okay, and in fact, I'll just tell you, maybe this will help clarify and understand a little better. If I designate an animal for Korban Pesach, and... I didn't sacrifice it on Pesach, okay? I didn't for whatever reason. I took a different animal. After Pesach, it automatically reverts to being a Korban Shlamim. It's as if I designated it for a Korban Shlamim because that's like the default. We're, we're, it's clear I'm not going to save this animal for next year, right? First of all, there's a certain age frame the animal can be in. And once it passes, it's automatically. What we're really talking about is what if it was before, where it could have been for a Korban Pesach, and then I slaughter it, Shelo Lishma, I bring it on the first of Nisan, and I say, I'm bringing this for a shlamim, lo lishma, right? Because it's not for the purpose of what I designated the animal to be. It's actually effective and the korban can be brought, okay? The question now becomes, right? So we now have two equal things. We have a Pesach that's brought on Yudalid, lishma, is like a Pesach brought not on Yudalid, shelo lishma. It's very confusing because lo lishma sounds bad, but lo lishma could actually be good if it's, a, not your Dalit. And any day other than your Dalit, a Lolishma actually works. So he buy a So they ask the following question based on the Mishnah. What about a Pesach, Shashachato Bishar Yemotashana, any other day of the year? Lishmo Vishelo Lishmo. What if you did it both Lishmo and Shelo Lishmo? You said both for Pesach and for Shlami. Does that work? Remember, if you do it just for Pesach, it's a problem. If you do it just for Shlami, it will work. So what if you do both? Mi ate shelo lishmo, does the shelo lishmo come and basically override? Umapik le mi de lishmo. Takes it out of its korban pesach nature. Now, why would you think maybe you could do that? Because today is not pesach. There is no responsibility to bring a pesach today. Umach shirle, and therefore we'll make it okay and you can bring the korban. Olo, or not. Or is it basically, do we ignore the shelo lishmo and we basically look at this is a korban that you tried to do L'Shem Pesach on a day that's not Pesach, and that would be invalid. So how do we view this? So we're going to see, I'll tell you the structure from here to the end. We're going to have an answer and then a different opinion. We're going to have two different opinions. Then the Gemara is going to say, okay, so what's the deal? You know, it's very nice. You gave me two opinions, but what do we do? Rav is going to give an answer. Rav Ad is going to try to reject it, and Rav is going to support his answer. So that's what we're going to end up with. So is this section, we ended without an answer. This section, the previous section, this one, we're going to have an answer. So Ki'ata Ravdimi Amar, when Ravdimi came from Israel, he explained, he kind of told the following story. He said, Amalita lishmate kamei Rabbi Yirmiya. I said the following to Rabbi Yirmiya, and then he's going to basically say, Rabbi Yirmiya disagreed with me. Okay, so first he's going to bring his opinion, then he's going to tell us that Rabbi Yirmiya didn't agree with what he said. Ho'il, and here I put it on the chart, I made some arrows, if you see, to try to explain the, and some equal signs and, and not equal signs to try to explain what's going on here. So hopefully it'll help you. I don't know, some people visualize things better than others. If it helps you, great. If not, not. Ho'il ulishmo machshiro bizmano. It sounds very complicated, but in the end, it's actually quite simple. Because lishmo is machshir bizmano, that means, and yudalid, right? This is the comparison I already set up before. Yudalid lishmo is just like not your Dalid, Shelo Lishmo, because both of those are effective. Okay, that's what they're basically going to say in the beginning. Since Ho'il Ulishmo is Machshiro Bismano, and Shelo Lishmo, Machshiro Shelo Bismano, again, Lishmo works when it's on your Dalid. Lo Lishmo works, right? Remember, we're, we're talking all the time about an animal that you designate for Korban Pesach at some point in time. Now you bring it either before your Dalid for the wrong reason, meaning for a Shlamim, or on your Dalid as a Pesach. Both those are valid, correct? Everyone agrees with that. So now, if we make that comparison, those two are equal. So now let's go back to what we learned in the Mishnah. What did we learn in our Mishnah? Ma lishmo hamachshiro bezmano. Lishmo works when it's the right time. But aim motzi'o midei shalo lishmo, meaning if you said lishmo and shalo lishmo, 
The fact that Lishmo works on your Dalit, it doesn't help you if you also said Shalom Lishmo. Once you say Shalom Lishmo, that messes you up. So obviously we'll say the same thing with the Shalom Lishmo. Af Shalom Lishmo, HaMachshiro Shalom Bizmano, when you have a Shalom Lishmo on not your Dalit and it's effective, but if you were to add to it a Lishmo also, which is ineffective, Ein Motzi Omi De Lishmo Pasul. Basically, as soon the, the the bottom line here, without getting into all the crazy words, it's very it sounds very confusing. Lo bismano, lo bismano, lo bismano, a lot of terms, but what it means is we're going to basically compare those to one hundred percent. If we say the second you add something that's disqualified on this day, it messes it up. The fact that you said something appropriate and right doesn't fix the inappropriate thing that you said. So therefore, since Lishmo v'shalo Lishmo doesn't work on Erev Pesach, because you mentioned Shalo Lishma, so Lishmo v'shalo Lishmo doesn't work on any other day because you mentioned Lishmo. Okay? It's basically comparing the two. To which Amar Li, Rabbi Yirmiya, then said back to me, says Rabbi Dimi, he corrected me or disagreed with me and said, Lo, you can't compare the two. That's not a fair comparison. Ia mark v'shalo Lishmo. When you go on Erev Pesach, you're supposed to do it Lishem Pesach, right? But instead you say, I'm doing it l'shem shlamim, right? You add those words. Well, those words are much worse than saying l'shmo on Aleph Nisan. Why is that? Shekein no heg because, and, and you can even hear it in the words, l'shmo, uh, shalo l'shmo is problematic for every other sacrifice. That's a term we never want to hear. Shalom lishmo, right? There's only one time it's effective, and that's when it's not, right? A korban Pesach, not on Pesach will be effective. But normally, any shalom lishmo, if you take an animal for a chatad, a sin offering, and then you offer it as a korban ola, as a burnt offering, disqualified. That's a constantly disqualifying term. Since it's always going to be a disqualifying term, when you say that together with your word lishmo, you're basically that Lo lishma is very strong and it's going to totally get knocked out. But tomar lishma. But if, when you talk about the reverse, when you're standing on the first day of Nisan, okay, again, I'm just picking any day of the year. You're standing on the first of Nisan and you say, "I'm doing it lishmo v'shalo lishmo," and you want to basically say you can't ignore the lishmo because the lishmo is very strong and overpowers the shalo lishmo and messes you up. But no, shekene no noheg b'cholas v'alchim ela b'pesel v'olvad. The disqualification of saying the word Lishmo when it's not Pesach is a very weak disqualification because in any other sacrifice, that's an effective statement. So only, right, that's not so strong. So when you say two things, again, this is the value of, it goes back to Tvos Lashon Rishon. When you say something that contradicts, right, what do we look at? So here he's saying it's a game of strengths. Lo Lishma is constantly a disqualified thing. So in this case, if you said on Erev Pesach, Lishma v'shalo Lishma, Lishma comes and destroys you, but, or d- disqualifies your karma. But on Erev, pa- on any other day, not Erev Pesach, when you say Shalom Lishma and Lishma, and you want the Lishma to override the Shalom Lishma, no, the Lishma disqualification is very weak because it only is a disqualification by Pesach. That's what he claims. I mean, one can claim otherwise, but that's what he says. So, as I said before, the Gemara is now going to say, okay, so you left me with two parts, right? One said, they're totally equal. We're going to basically compare them. What happens there? Any kind of disqualification terminology is going to mess you up, just like they are also here. As opposed to Rav Adbarava, who said, I'm um, sorry, not Rav Adbarava, um, Rav Yirmiya, who says, no, they're not the same. They're not comparable. So, my Haviala, Amarava, Rava says, Pesach shashachato b'sha'ar yimot ha-shana, lishmo v'shalo lishmo kashir. He says, like the second explanation we just saw, Rabbi Yirmiya, it's actually kasher. If you do it on any other day, shelo lishma and lishmo, it's going to be valid. Why? He gives a different reason now. Deha, he gives very interesting logic. He says like this. What did we say? If I'm standing on any day other than Pesach, an Erev Pesach, and I say I'm bringing this sacrifice I designate as a Pesach, and I'm doing it shelo lishma, he says that's the same as saying lishma v'shelo lishma. Why? Because I already designated it for Pesach. So, Stama, that means if I weren't to say anything about this, it's already in the box of Lishma. So, when I say Shalom Lishma, I'm basically setting up this Lishma and Lo Lishma because it's, its default was Lishma. So, let's read it inside. He says, Daha Stamo Lishmokai. The Stam of this animal, if I didn't say anything, remember, 
I designated it three months ago for a Korban Pesach or whenever I designated it. At this point, if I didn't say anything and I came on Yudalad and I slaughtered it without any intent, it would obviously be valid because obviously I'm bringing it for a Korban Pesach because it's already called a Korban Pesach. So by default, it's, car- it's got the name Lishma on it. And yet, Afilu Hachi, Ki Shachet Leishalo Lishma Kasher. When I sacrifice this now on the first day of Nisan for a Shlamim, I've overridden the Stam of Lishma. So it's as if, okay, no, that's the question. Is it really as if? But right now he's assuming the fact that the Stam, the default is Lishma, it's as if I said, right, Alma ate shalo lishma, uma pikle shma, lishma. You see that the lo lishma comes and overrides the lishma. Therefore, kishachit nami lishmo. Therefore, if I were to slaughter it for the name of a korban pesach on the first day of Nisan, and then I said shalo lishmo, ate shalo lishmo, uma pikle mide lishmo, he basically says, since the default is lishmo, it's no different than if I expressed it or if I thought it in my head. So by the way, this would be stronger if we would say that it's only thinking, because then they're really more comparable. Thinking is the same as default option. So okay, he's going to obviously say that's not necessarily true. Okay, Default is not the same as expressing it. No, there's a difference between a default and between expressing something. Again, expressing could be just in thoughts, but expressing. Daha, and how is, here is he going to prove it from the next Mishnah. Le'ochlav v'shalo le'ochlav kasher. The next Mishnah says, remember, if you do it le'ochlav and not le'ochlav, it's kasher. Now, kol hecha deshachit le'shalo le'ochlav lechude pasul. If you were to do it just shalo le'ochlav by itself, it would be disqualified. Va'amai, why would that be? What's the stam of a korban? The stam is, I'm doing it for people who can eat it, right? I'm doing it for the people in the group who can eat. So what do you see here? Since I said la'ochlav, that overrides the stam. Okay, so Ella, now remember, if I said just shalo la'ochlav, it would be a problem. If I said la'ochlav vishalo la'ochlav, it works. So what he's saying is, if I were to say, right, shalo la'ochlav lechude, it would be pasul. If I did it by itself, it would be pasul. Why? If we say the stam counts, then... When I say shalom le'ochlav, I'm including also le'ochlav. And then it would be a case of le'ochlav, shalom le'ochlav, which would be kasher, and that's not what it says in the Mishnah. So, Ella, therefore, he proves, Ella shane hecha da'amar, mehecha amar. must be different if I say it than if I don't express it. The stama is not strong if I don't say it. So, hachanami, likewise by us, shane hecha da'amar, mehecha amar. But comes Rava with a response. And Rava says, you're comparing apples and oranges. Le'ochlav and shalom le'ochlav is not the same, the default of that I'm obviously shechting it lo'ochlav, and then I come and say shalom lo'ochlav, that stama doesn't hold. Right? The whole idea there was, if it, the stama counted, then if I said shalom lo'ochlav, and it included lo'ochlav, anytime I say, for those who can eat and those who can't eat, it works. But here, it doesn't work because we ignore the default. There we ignore the default, but in lishma we don't ignore the default. And why is that? Because there's different defaults here. There's different, again, it's the same thing about the koch, before we talked about it. Right? The kach of one is stronger because it's, it's a psul by all other korbanot, so you can't just ignore it. Whereas the lishma is dafka usually good. So, okay, so again, it's about strengths. So, amar lei midi iria, you can't compare the two. Bishlama hatam kamadilo akar le bishrita stame vadai lishmokai. Unless I go and slaughter it and say, I'm, once I designate my animal for a korban pesach, the only way I can remove this animal from being a Korban Pesach is to slaughter it with a wrong intent. Otherwise, it's clearly going to be a Korban Pesach. That means it's a very strong default. However, But if I designate an animal with the thought that X number of people are going to eat it, right? All these people who, are going to, who can eat are going to eat it. I can change my mind from then until Shrita. The time that gets, the time that basically I have to have, this is like classic, right? I invite guests and I can uninvite, I can, or people can change their mind. I'm not coming, I am coming. That can change until they show up at my house, right? Then I know who's at my meal. But here, it's the same thing. I can change, I, once I designate for a, a carbon pesticide, I can't start changing it. But if I say it's going to be for the following people, we can keep changing who's going to be in the group. Only, right, until Shechita. 
תתנן נמנים ומושכים את ידיהם ממנו עד שישחט. You can still keep changing who's going to be in the group until שחיטה. At שחיטה it's determined. But what does that show? Since it can be changed until שחיטה, whereas the animal can't be changed until שחיטה, that's a much stronger default. So that default is going to show you, again, what's it going to show you? That default of לשמה is strong, which means that when you do it לשמה ושלא לשמה, right, we're going to say, since שלא לשמה overrides a סתם לשמה, it's going to also override it when you actually express it. So again, the answer is, if, where that's not true for the אוכלף. So therefore, if you do a Karban Pesach on the wrong day, and you bring it שלא לשמה and לשמה, the fact that you said שלא לשמה is going to mean it's a valid Karban and it's going to work. That's Rava's answer. We're going to end here for today. We'll start with the new question tomorrow. This was a lot of information for one day. Okay, I hope you understood and have a great day.